So if you make your living as an entrepreneur, as a small business, as a side hustle, as a freelancer, then more likely than not, you're going to run into one of these deadbeat clients, someone that's going to promise you that's going to sign on the dotted line, a contract, but they simply just aren't going to pay or they cancel their credit card before a big payment is about to be processed and they will give you a whole song and dance or they will simply ignore you or they'll go the other route. They will get aggressive and they will say the oddest things just to get out of paying. And so the question is, what do you do? How do you deal with this? Because this is crucial to your business. It's crucial to your bottom line to collect payments. And it also depends. Is this a long relationship that I'm in and I'm hoping for more work? Because then I'll have some leeway. I'll schedule a meeting. I will give him a call. We'll set up a time. We'll discuss things, right? But if I'm being ignored, if it's just deadbeats that are just terrible people and they're just trying to scam and steal. And by the way, a lot of these people that are going to stiff you, for some reason, I find that it's rich people. It's the people that can pay are the ones that stiff you because they're almost disconnected. They forgot what it took to get there. They forgot how it was for them on the way up. Or maybe they just fell into the money and it's all cocaine and hookers for them. And they don't care about life. Like their moral compass is so eroded by now. They're cheating on their wives. They're cheating on their girlfriends. They're cheating in business. They don't care about any type of ethics anymore. And they simply don't care. They're callous to the world and they're sociopaths. You will get those type of people. But if you are working in a long-term relationship, I always advise that you have some leniency. Let them pay in installments, like split it up into four installments and explain your situation too. Don't come at it very aggressive. In the beginning, you want to be friendly and you want to be able to work it out in a friendly manner. So you just explain, you know, this is my work. I handed it in. I worked hard. I'm not receiving the payment. How can we work this out before it escalates to me leaving bad reviews, to me contacting my legal team, to me filing a small claims, to writing blogs, YouTube videos, whatever it takes. And it's okay to put a little bit of pressure on them because remember, by them stiffing you, not paying you money, they are putting the pressure on you. They're making you feel gross and you feel like a loser. Like you just got stiffed and they're like, ha ha, we have your work, screw you. And so it's okay to give some pressure back. If you do have to go and have those review wars or you have to file legal action, go ahead and do it. You have to have some confidence. You can't just go through life being super, super agreeable all the time. But I will talk about when it's not worth it because you do have to gauge your emotional well-being. You have to make sure that it's not infringing on your happiness, your relationships at home, life in general. And so there's a fine line in this life, in business, you have to choose your battles. You can't just say, you know what? I got stiffed on $200. I'm going to dedicate this week to ruining this person's life so that they give me the $200 because the opportunity cost there is massive. First of all, you're stressing yourself out. Second of all, you're probably neglecting work that you already have or you're taking and losing the opportunity cost of getting more work. You probably could have taken that day that you were stressing and contacting legal teams and stuff. You could have went to a neighboring town, marketed your services and got a contract for $2,000 and then you would be up 1800 and you wouldn't even care about the 200. So you have to think of it in that sense. If this is a one time client and you know that they screwed you and they're simply just not going to give you the money most likely. Is it worth going absolutely ham, stressing yourself out? Maybe, but that's a decision you have to make for yourself and we'll touch upon it a little bit later. The other thing I want to mention is that a lot of freelancers, a lot of entrepreneurs these days, they are artists. They are working in the arts, photography, videography, web design, very, very, very common for entrepreneurship, for small businesses to be involved in. And in order to be good at that, you have to be an artist and an artist is always more sensitive. That's what makes them be an amazing artist. This is why they could tap into that creativity realm and produce amazing things, have a different perspective on the world. But it's a double edged sword because if you're really sensitive and you're trying to monetize your art, then you are probably going to be emotionally driven when things go bad or it's going to be eating away at you. You're going to be thinking about it before you go to sleep. And so you have to realize that as an artist that goes and tries to monetize their craft, 
You have to practice with these things where you're compartmentalizing, where you can't put your foot down, where it's okay to be confrontational. You are running a business. It is a doggy dog world out there. And obviously it would be great if you could just pick the right clients. And again, I highly recommend that you do research on whichever client you're going to go with. Do your DD. Look up if they have reviews in their company or if they've done work for someone else and you can give them a call, get a little bit of a feel for the client. Take a look at their social media. Take a look at what they're posting about. Are they someone that's pure? They're into you know yoga and health and stuff or are they all cocaine and hookers and just crazy lifestyle? Because that could give you some insight you will create good intuition the more times that you have like this where you run into a deadbeat client and it turns into this whole nightmare you have to learn from that absorb that digest that and moving forward you have to have better intuition you will spot the people that are absolute filth just gutter scum rodents and you know that you're going to get screwed don't go ahead and do business with them. That's on you then. Or for those people, go ahead and structure something where it's all the payment is up front. I need a check that I can deposit or, you know, a credit card if it's going to take longer than 30 days so they don't go and cancel it on you. But whatever you do as a businessman, as a businesswoman, you can never lose your confidence. You can't let one occurrence, I don't care if it's $10,000, $20,000 that you got stiffed on. You have to wake up the next day. You got to have the confidence that you're going to crush the day. You have to know that you're capable, able, driven, put in the honest, gritty work and go get what's yours. Do not let a setback like a deadbeat client stiffing you hurt your productivity or have you not reach your goals. They are not worth it. They are scum. You are someone who is driven and you deserve to meet your goals and be excited about what you do and your happiness is important. So make sure that you're picking your battles. And when you are dealing with someone that is stiffing you, start off nice, have a conversation, try to work it out. If that doesn't work, then escalate. Make them uncomfortable, as uncomfortable as you're comfortable with making them uncomfortable. Again, reviews, talking to everyone they're connected with, telling them about what happened, blogs, videos, social media, tagging them and stuff. Whatever you have to do, do that. They made you uncomfortable, make them uncomfortable. Then if you have to file a small claims, as long as the amount doesn't exceed what small claims allows in your state, go ahead and do that. Talk to a debt collector. Talk to a friend who has a legal mind. Maybe they could write a letter for you. You could send it out. Maybe just that will scare them into paying. Hassle them. Be okay with hassling them, again, as much as you're comfortable with because the emotional distress is simply not worth it if you're going to be going ahead and hassling yourself and while hassling them. And so the other thing I want to point out is how to avoid this altogether. So there are people that get burnt once or twice and they say, never again. I will never structure a contract like this again. I need everything up front. Pay me up front. But what happens is, you're going to turn off a lot of clients. You're going to take out that one scum gutter rat. You're going to take out that experience on all the good people that are trying to do business with you that might turn into really long-term relationships. And so be mindful of that. And this video is very personal to me as well because ever since I was in college, I've never had a corporate gig. I've always worked for myself. I've had a lot of freelancing jobs. I started small businesses. I advised a lot of entrepreneurs. And then when I opened up Promo Ambitions at the end of grad school, I never looked back. I do a lot of 3D printing, photography videos, videography work. I'm a web designer and a web developer. And I do all that under the Promo Ambitions LLC umbrella. The way I structure is like this for web design, photography, videography. Let's take a banquet hall where I'm doing an engagement party. I will take a deposit. After I collect the deposit, I will have phases to the project. So then I will say, once I show up at the end of the night, after I've done all the clicking, all the footage was taken, you have to pay me this amount of money. Then when I hand in the video work, once you approve it and it's handed in, downloaded from Google Drive or wherever, then you pay me this amount. And then the final amount I get when I hand over the photos and you're happy with the photos. This way you only risk the last part being stiffed on because they have all the work and they could say, okay, thanks for the work, go f yourself. And so in order to avoid that, you simply slice it up into phases. And this is great because you're going to get a lot more clients. Trust me, people want to work in that fashion. They don't want to chalk up and cough up all their money right away. They might not know you. This might be a brand new relationship. And if you're saying this is going to cost three and a half thousand dollars, 
write me a check so I deposit it or give me a credit card. I'm going to charge you out three and a half thousand. Here's the contract, sign it, and then I'll show up. I'll do the work and you better hope I do a good job. That's not fair. That's not putting the client at a disadvantage. You want to meet in the middle and you want to make sure that it's going to end up being hopefully good business. And then I want to round this out with this because I mentioned that you can't just get walked all over. You have to stand up for yourself. You can't go through life just being agreeable and oh, sorry, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, absolutely. Yada, yada. That's not going to land you anywhere when it comes to being a self-sufficient businessman or businesswoman and really making the amount of money that you want. That being said, please remember that forgiving someone is forgiving yourself too. Forgiveness goes a long way. So if you got yourself into a situation where the client is simply not going to pay, again, absolute deadbeat, scum of the earth, they're not paying, and you're going and you're jumping through all these hoops and you're blasting them online, that's really negative energy. And that negative energy, it's going to stick with you and it's going to stain the happiness that's in your life. And it's going to dampen the mood all the time. You're going to be darker with friends and relationships. And so you have to realize that sometimes you just have to forgive and let go. And this doesn't mean that you've lost. It actually means the opposite. Forgiveness is a very, very powerful thing because not only are you saying, you know what, this person has their own problems. They are a terrible person. They got to live with themselves. And just for a second, think about how awful it is to be that person, the person that stiffs other people, that doesn't pay when they promise they're going to pay. Just take a second and think about it. Most likely, these people have so many issues and they're so disgusted with themselves, they're callous to the world. They need the drugs and the alcohol to just be able to go to sleep. They open their eyes, they probably hate themselves, they don't look at themselves in the mirror, their families hate them, they lie about everything, they hate themselves, they go through the day, and then they got to debrief. They find themselves in a bar, they find themselves at a cocaine party, they do whatever they got to do and they take whatever they got to take just so they could just be with themselves because you're not the first person that they're screwing. They've probably screwed up a lot of things in their life, including themselves. And so you have to almost treat them like with sorrow, like with sympathy, like feel bad for them at some point if this is just dragging and say, you know what? I forgive you. I forgive myself. I'm going to learn from this experience. I'm going to move on. And if you really want to be big, write them a letter like that. At the end of it all, just send them an email and say, listen, we all make the decisions that we make in life. We all have to live with our decisions. We all have to look at ourselves in the mirror, face the day. I don't want to deal with this negativity anymore. I really do wish good things for you. I hope you change your ways. I hope that nobody makes you feel the way you made me feel when you stiffed me. It's wrong. But you have to live with that. That is you and that problem's on you. It is not on me anymore. Be well. And that'll make you feel so good because you're almost taking mercy on a deadbeat client. And honestly, the amount of negativity that you're going to soak in fighting these things, you can make so much more money, so much more progress, and you could do so in a serene place, in a focused place, not focusing on all this unpaid invoices and who's screwing you and what because that can derail your day and time is the most important asset that we have in this life so what are you doing with your time are you focusing on the negativity or are you looking ahead is there forward motion are you driven are you motivated are you inspired are you confident in yourself are you putting in the honest gritty work to get you to your goals and so when you're really frustrated when things are bogging you down ask yourself that question is this worth it? And is this hindering me from truly attaining the ultimate goals that I have set for myself? And am I putting in the honest work that I will be proud of a year from now, two years from now, five years from now? Because remember, you don't just owe it to your family, to the people around you. You owe success to yourself. And so ask yourself the question, am I doing a disservice to myself by focusing on this negativity? And the answer will let you know how to proceed with absolute scum of the earth, gutter rat, slime, deadbeat clients.